When you take a shallow look at something, like a building, you just kind of glanced at it, then you know you're familiar with it. You've seen it. But if you do tadabbur of it, meaning you know all sides of it, you even see the back of it. You've taken a good look at it, you've explored it thoroughly until you even see the back of it. You've got a full view of something. Which one takes longer, to glance at a building or take an entire inspection? Inspection. Tadabbur in the Qur'an, which is the word for reflection, is you don't just read the ayah, you dive into the ayah and find out what's behind this ayah for me. Behind this ayah, there's a lesson for me. There's the sign, this is what the ayah says. The human being was created greedy, quick to consume. That's what the ayah says. Behind it, what is it saying about me as a person? That's the tadabbur. Now tadabbur itself is two-pronged. It's a two-part thing. On the one hand, tadabbur is a reminder. It's spiritual in nature. Reminder is in the heart. Allah says, Allah bi dhikri Allahi tatma inna al Right? Dhikr is in the qalb. I say this all the time. So on the one hand, tadabbur is, you know, uh, spiritual. On the other hand, tadabbur is actually a thought process. It's reflect. It's uh, reflection and thought and a pursuit of wisdom. It's an intellectual thing, and it's both of these things. Now, how do we know it's both of these things? Allah complains in the Quran twice about people not doing tadabbur. Complains twice. Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Once he complains and says, the problem is spiritual. He says, Afala yatadabbarun al Quran am ala qulubin akfaluha. Why don't they reflect on the Quran? Why don't they look deeply into the Quran? Or is it the case that their hearts have their lock, their hearts have their locks on them? Is that the case? When Allah complains that the hearts are locked, obviously he's addressing an intellectual or a spiritual problem. He's saying reflection on the Quran is not there because you have a spiritual problem. Conversely, he's saying reflection on the Quran will address your spiritual problem. Reflection on the reminder through the Quran, etc. Okay? So it's a spiritual exercise. The second how come they don't reflect on the Qur'an? Had it been from other than Allah, they would have found a lot of contradiction in it. Roughly speaking, that's what Allah says. Now the thing is, to find contradiction or find consistency, is that a spiritual exercise or an intellectual exercise? That's an intellectual exercise. He says, if you truly reflected on the Qur'an, you would come to the conviction that there are no inconsistencies in it. There are no contradictions in it. It has to be the word of Allah. That's an intellectual exercise of tadabbur. There are two sides of it. But the thing is, when do we engage with salat, with tadabbur? With, with Qur'an, with tadabbur, I said it in the sentence before, in the question, it's salat itself. Salat is the exercise of tadabbur. Salat, when we recite Qur'an in the prayer, that is supposed to be the moment of reflection and thought, ideally. Why is that? Because the, 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 the concept of thinking clearly means you're not thinking about other things and you're not distracted. I am mentioning this because Allah started the passage with greed. Halur, jazur. Shar happens to him, he loses sabr. Then he says, come to salat first. And once you come out of salat, then you will learn the real purpose in your life and you, will, you won't be as clingy with your money anymore. If you're a really person of reflection, then you'll realize that you're going to be gone from here. So you'll make the right investments. And you'll realize that there's rights in the money you've earned to give to others. Salat itself, that it doesn't matter what passage of Qur'an you recite, it'll remind you that you're going to leave here. There's bigger problems. So you start thinking of the rights of others. Nisa'ili wal mahroom. For the one who comes out and asks, and the one that's dis- dis- deprived. Two categories of people. There's somebody who physically comes and embarrasses himself and herself and asks you. Then they lost a job, they can't pay the bills, the electricity is gone, you know, husband went away or something or passed away or something, and they, they can't help themselves, and they are, it's humiliating to them, but they make a call and say, can I borrow some money, can I have some money? It would really, I would really appreciate it. And it really, it's the, it's the, it's the, it hurts the dignity of a human being to want to have to ask. Right? To be put in that position, may Allah keep us all from being in that position. It's a very embarrassing and humiliating position to be in. But if somebody did bring themselves to ask, then don't make them ask again. And then there's al-mahroom. Al-mahroom is the one that's deprived. The one that doesn't have. 
we saw in, you know, when the gardeners got to their garden and everything was gone, they said, وَلَّحْنُ مَحْرُمُونَ We're completely deprived. We have nothing left. We're bankrupted. Now, the, the question that, from tadabbur, the question that lies behind this ayah, is how will you know about the sa'il? And how will you know about the mahroom? Especially about the mahroom, because the mahroom doesn't ask. But you have a right in your wealth for the mahroom. Which means they won't ask, you'll have to go and ask them. You have to be in touch with people around you. You have to know what's going on in your block. You have to know what's going on among your cousins, among your family. We have this concept, this artificial concept of community sometimes, where people come and pray together at a masjid, and they leave. They say salam to each other, maybe the guys play a little bit. We don't know each other's families. We don't know our problems. We don't know if somebody has trouble. We're not close enough that somebody would be comfortable in saying, brother, I have an issue in my family. I need some help. We don't have those relationships. And when somebody does come and ask, when somebody does come and ask, we don't know if they're genuine or not because we don't have genuine relationships. That doesn't exist. Behind this ayah is actually a sense of community. You can't establish this until there's a sense of community. And a sense of care for extended family. So it starts with family and then everybody else. You know, you have a cousin who's in need, you have an aunt, you have a distant relative. They live in some other country. Or they live here and you haven't been in touch. Whether, you know, whether they're Muslim or not doesn't even matter. But they're in need. You help. Allah didn't say, لِسَائِلِ الْمُسْلِمِ وَالْمَحْرِمِ وَالْمَحْرُومِ الْمُؤْمِنِ Any, Anyone who asks. Anyone who's in need. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.